pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> May we have a roll call, please? Mr. Prince? Here. Mr. Corman? Here. Mr. Pavoni? Here. Ms. Perez? Here. Mr. McIrvin? Here. Ms. Witchie? Here. Mr. Person? Roll call, Mr. Mayor, one absent. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Prince. I move we excuse the absent council member. Second. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Prince, second by Mr. Corman. Will we excuse council member Person? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, first item on the agenda. Well, it's not on your agenda, but we have a special presentation tonight with a check presentation to Children's Hospital. Some of you probably recall a couple weeks ago, well, I don't know how long it's been, over a month ago where we had um, a little football game between the police and the firefighters. And um, it was a close game, right guys? Really a close game. Um, but it was all for a good cause. And so it's my pleasure to uh, have Officer Rob Magruder come up here and talk about this a little bit. this way yes face that way you have to face <laughs> these guys okay <laughs> all right good evening guys okay so on May 6th of this year obviously we did a flag football charity game between the police officers um, rented police officers and rented firefighters um, so did I the idea was developed by uh, Hazen ASB leadership class uh, one of the students involved was Kevin Hanus there in uh, the green shirt so he approached me and he asked, hey, Officer Rob, I'm a school resource officer at Hazen High School. He, was, he asked if, um, if there was any way that the firefighters and the police officers, police officers could do a basketball game and raise uh, some money for charity. So I told him that I'll do some digging it back to him. Um, I talked to one of my close friends at the fire department, Greg LeBlanc, and uh, we talked to a few people and they decided what about a football game. So from there, we started building different ideas of which, um, which charity we wanted to raise money for, um, type of football game we wanted to do. And long story, on, long story short on that, we decided to do Seattle Children's Hospital. And um, there's a few different funds, and one of the funds we decided was the Uncompensated Child Care Fund, which actually covers child care. Just what it sounds like, it's, it covers um, ch uh, child care for um, children that can't afford uh, health care, obviously. Um, there was also a few other students um, that helped us with the designs. Uh, Daniel and Sophia, they're uh, graphic design students. They're at Hazen High School, and they helped uh, promote the event. They helped design the t-shirts, um, helped pick out trophies and stuff like that. Uh, all of the firefighters um, were on board. So were uh, the police officers. Uh, police, we ended up losing. Um, <laughs> 31 and 19, but the rumor is that fire paid the refs, so <laughs> we're, st we're, st we're still investigating that. <laughs> um, but today, uh, Seattle Children's sent uh, representative, representative Brianna Nettleton um, to receive the check. So we raised over $2,200. The exact amount was $2,250. And we're actually shooting for $1,000, so we went way over um, what we were uh, expecting. Any questions? That's a great yeah. job, Rob. Thank you. So, so we want to want to get everybody and fire. Get everybody up here in the front, fire guys. Can we back up a little bit, or you can come right up here, Rob, okay, cool. in the front. Perfect. Can we, should we stand up? Yeah. Oh, Sophia's wearing a shirt that they designed at her hand. You guys have to get just close together here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you stand next to you today, yeah. you may not be standing. <laughs> These ones are just fast so I can get them up on good people. <laughs> Okay, my turn. I better hold that trophy up a little bit if you're going to have it right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good job. 
one, two, and three. I'm gonna do one more. Everybody's so tall. Rob's never heard that before in his life. <laughs> One, two, and three. Thank you. Well, great job, you guys. Great cause, and it'll be everybody's going to be looking forward to the game next year. Police promise they're going to win. Okay, moving on to a proclamation. Okay, this proclamation is for Drum Corps Day. Whereas Seattle Cascades is the oldest and most honored drum and bugle corps in the Pacific Northwest and the only drum corps international world-class corps in the state of Washington. And whereas the Seattle Cascades is entering its 52nd year of entertaining and thrilling audiences in competitions throughout the country, culminating at the DCI World Championships in Indianapolis, Indiana. And whereas the Seattle Cascades is hosting the Seattle Summer Music Games at Renton Memorial Stadium on July 7th, 2018, featuring eight of the nation's finest drum corps, including the Academy from Tempe, Arizona, Blue Knights from Denver, Colorado, Oregon Crusaders from Portland, Oregon, Pacific Grass from Diamond Bar, California, six-time world champion Vanguard from Sa Santa Clara, California, Troopers from Casper, Wyoming, Columbians from Pasco, Washington, and the battalion from Salt Lake City, Utah. And whereas the drum corps activity represents the finest in musical pageantry, performing before thousands of appreciative fans throughout the United States and beyond. And whereas the drum corps activity provides opportunities for young men and women to develop leadership skills, express their creative powers, enhance life skills to become productive, outstanding members of society, learn what it means to achieve excellence, and provide an outlet to perform artistically at the highest level. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Law, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim July 7th, 2018, to be Drum Corps Day in the City of Renton, and I encourage all citizens to recognize the contributions that the members and staff of every Drum Corps have made in their respective communities. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Renton to be affixed this 25th day of June, 2018. And this is signed by Mayor Dennis Law. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Prince. I move the proclamation be adopted as read. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Prince, second by Mr. Corman, that this proclamation be adopted as read. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. So this evening we have Ed Pet Petkavich, did That's I right. pronounce that correctly? President of the Board of Directors for Seattle Cascades and David Hanion here to receive this proclamation. So please, if you'd like to say a couple words, you go up to the podium. <clears throat> well, you heard the gist of the, of the event. It's an all-day event. It's going to be um, at Memorial Stadium on July 7th, starting at noon with food trucks, beer and wine garden, uh, a Seattle Cascades rehearsal in the afternoon, a marketplace that will feature all of the drum corps plus businesses throughout the community, and the show starting at 5.45 with the Thunder, Soundwave, and the Alberta uh, Sabres Marching Band, in addition to the nine cores that will be competing. So it's going to be a fantastic event. We invite everybody to go. I have uh, flyers that I'll leave here for everybody to uh, take with them. You can go online and take a look at all the events, and then tickets are now on sale, but I urge everybody to come and to uh, go to the website because the tickets are going fast. That's great. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, and we're glad you're going to be here in Renton. That's wonderful. So thank you for we being here this We hope to make this, this an annual event here. That'll be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda is a public hearing. Angie, are you up?
Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of Council. Angie Mathias here to uh, present um, the public hearing for Wolf Woods annexation. So the annexation process is a very long process, and uh, we were here before you back in, I think, September of last year at the 10% uh, phase, and now we've checked off a number of the boxes in the, in the process, and we're here before you this evening holding a public hearing. So at this point, um, state law requires a public hearing with the proponents for you all to accept or reject the annexation. Uh, you can accept uh, part of the, a part of the area or all of it that's been petitioned for the um, annexation. This area is located in the East Plateau community planning area, but also more towards the northern portion of that uh, community planning area. It's at the eastern portion of our city limits. It's about eight acres in size. The current uses are single family and vacant. Um, and you can see there the boundaries roughly are Northeast 20th Street if it were extended to the east, a parcel line that runs near Lyons Avenue Northeast if that were to be there. To the south, it's just a parcel line. And to the west, it's near Kitsap Place Northeast. And here's an aerial of the area. You can see to the south there is the vacant parcel. That's a large parcel, about five acres in size. The existing conditions, there appear to be no steep slopes on the area. We don't regulate slopes until they're about, they hit 40%, and so this area does not have any of those regulated slopes. Uh, looking at streams and wetlands, there is the Greens Creek that runs through the, uh, one of the, two of the parcels that are within the annexation area. It's a type NS stream. Uh, that means that it does not contain fish. It has seasonal flow. And then there's wetlands that are to the south of it. Most of those are in a um, protected tract, but they're about 200 feet to the south of the, of the annexation area. And we'll look more at um, environmental conditions when we look at zoning later on. Public services, it's currently served by the Renton Fire Authority. That would not change upon annexation. Uh, utilities are served by Water District 90 and the Renton Sewer Utility. That would not change with annexation. And currently, almost all of the area is in the Issaquah School District. That would not change upon annexation. King County land use designation is urban residential medium, which allows for a range between four and 12 dwelling units per acre for the zoning. It's been zoned with R4 King County zoning. In Renton's land use designation, it's designated as residential low density, which allows resource conservation zoning, R1 zoning, or R4 zoning. This area was pre-zoned in 1999, or 1997, excuse me. You can see the southern portion was zoned R5. We don't have that zone anymore, so we need to rezone this area as we go through the annexation process. The first public hearing on that zoning is tonight. Um, so that's one of the things being considered and is available for public comment. Uh, we'll have another second public hearing when we zone annexation areas, two public hearings are required. And we would uh, come back to you for that public hearing if this annexation, if it's approved by you and it's approved by the Boundary Review Board. So we always look at our uh, land use policies and our zoning policies to determine uh, how to zone something. So Comprehensive Plan Land Use Policy LU14 sort of calls out uh, where how we zone RC and R1 and R4. So land that is with, has significant environment environmental constraints that's not appropriate for urban development, that is suitable for environmental protection or restoration is what we should zone resource conservation. It allows one dwelling unit per 10 acres. R1 is lands that are, have significant environmental constraints that have the potential for development at an intensity that is compatible with that environment so we can adequately protect the environment. And in that case, we would allow one dwelling unit per acre. Uh, for the R4 zone, we say that, we, that that is land that is suitable for housing with large lots, that's compatible with the scale and density of the surrounding area, and that allows four dwelling units per acre. So a little bit more on that, we look to our uh, development regulations, um, and that talks about what the zone's intents are. So for the resource conservation, it's a very low density residential zone. Some residential uses of land with extensive critical areas is allowed. It promotes uses that are compatible with critical areas. It also provides separation of areas that are more intense urban uses and critical area lands or agricultural uses. So it's really something that's uh, reserved for very extensive critical areas. R1 provides for residential <coughs> development of lands that are pervasive critical areas where limited residential development will not compromise those critical areas. It allows for large lot and clustered single family dwellings. 
And then finally, the R4 promotes urban single family neighborhoods that are serviceable by urban utilities and can, that contain open space amenities. It serves as a transition between rural zones and higher density residential areas. It's an intermediate lower density, lower density residential zone. Uh, so you'll recall um, the environmental slide with the streams and wetlands. Um, approximately 375 feet of Greens Creek runs through the area. Being a type NS stream means that it does not contain fish or fish habitat. It has intermittent flows, seasonal non-habitat stream in which surface flow is not present for at least some portion of the normal rainfall year. It is physically connected. Greens Creek is physically connected to May Creek, which is a fish bearing stream. Um, if development were to occur around Greens Creek, it would require a 50 foot buffer from the creek and an additional 15 foot buffer um, from the, for the structure setback. There's no development proposed at this time, but I just wanted to note what the buffers would be if development were proposed at some point in the future. The buffer or the wetland that's to the south is about 200 feet to the uh, south. It is already mostly in a protected track. We don't know the, what it would be designated now or um, the way that we categorize, what, categorize wetlands has changed since that uh, wetland delineation was done. So we don't know what the buffer is given that we don't know what type of wetland it is. So we can't tell you what the limitations on development would be related to that wetland. So there do not appear to be um, any protected slopes on this area or other critical areas in close proximity or within the annexation area. Um, the presence of this stream and the wetland in close proximity do not constitute extensive or pervasive cr critical areas as ca characterized in the purpose and, and intent in the comprehensive plan and in the municipal code. Therefore, R4 zoning is what is proposed by staff. So regarding the annexation, we always look at our policies. Um, we promote annexation where and when it's in Renton's best interest. We support annexations where infrastructure and services will allow for urban densities and, and or where it would consolidate service providers. Um, and we also always analyze the fiscal impacts. So we also uh, try to anticipate how the Boundary Review Board would, would uh, receive this and look at their objectives. Uh, they ask that we use physical boundaries that are not, in, not limited to but including waterways, highways, and land contours. This all uses either streets or parcel lines, which are considered uh, physical boundaries. It's not a, a, an irregular boundary. It's pretty much a regular rectangle um, of a boundary, so that's very regular. Uh, service areas are previously agreed to. Those are unchanged. And then uh, annexation is to be of an unincorporated area to a city that is urban. And Renton is an urban city, meaning that we're on the inside of the urban growth boundary. The fiscal analysis on this existing conditions are that there are five dwellings with 11, an estimated 11, dwell, 11 residents. Future conditions, there's the potential capacity for as many as eight additional dwelling units with an estimated 18 residents. And that's just if development occurs. If it doesn't, then it would probably remain closer to the five. Costs are estimated to increase annually at 3.3% with revenue limited to 2.5% to the sales tax, utility tax, and franchise fees. So existing. Um, to the operating fund, it's estimated that revenues would be about $13,000 with costs at about $10,000. Go year, out to year 10, if that development were to occur, revenues would be about $37,000 with costs at about $35,000. To the capital and enterprise funds, existing uh, revenues about $2,000 with costs at about $1,100. Year 10, if that area were to um, build out, would be revenues of about $47,000 and costs at about $3,700. So comments, we always circulate annexations to all the city departments and everybody reviews that and has the opportunity to make comment. Um, all departments that reviewed it uh, indicated that it represented a logical extension of their services and it did not pr present any logical any, or any concerns or uh, limitations. In conclusion, the best interests and in general welfare of the city are served by this annexation. It's a logical extension of our services. It's consistent with our annexation policies, and it's consistent with the Boundary Review Board criteria. The recommendation of the administration is that we um, actually not authorize the circulation of a 60% petition, but accept the 60% petition as submitted. Sorry about that. And then authorize the city to go ahead and uh, submit this notice of intent to the Boundary Review Board. And then finally, that uh, final bullet is correct, that we zone the site with residential four dwelling units per acre. So the actual administration recommendation on that top portion is not correct. It's to accept the 60% petition and authorize um, submittal to the Boundary Review Board. Okay, thank you, Angie. Any questions from Council? Is there any correspondence?
No, there was not. Okay, this is a, a, a public meeting and we do have uh, several people signed up to address the council. So when I call your name, please come to the podium, give your name and city of residence for the record and you have five minutes. First is Sue Wolf. Well, where the, yeah, the one that the map, shows yeah. the map. Yeah, that looks great. Um, hi, I'm Sue Wolf, and uh, my mom, Bev Wolf, owns the property that you see. Actually, she owns all of the green <laughs> that you can see. Um, the green, long, skinny Utah shaped <laughs> that is um, below the annexation, uh, directly adjacent, is already annexed to the city of Renton. Uh, my mom and dad uh, did that annexation with the building of Windstone and um, in working in collaboration with the development and, and with Renton as they were doing Windstone. And so what, it, what it's done is half of the property is in King County and half is in the city of Renton. And then in addition, um, my house is there and uh, there's um, four other houses. And we're all, we're sandwiched between city of Renton there. And so I just ask that you consider that this will make it much more cohesive and, and kind of goes along with the, all of the planning that Renton's been doing for years and years and years and, and consider the annexation. So it's, it's logical and, and there are plenty of, we've had recent wetlands um, survey done on our property last summer um, for the seasonal creek and so the setbacks of basically 75 feet on either side is is exactly what we would want too so just wanted to make sure you knew that all right thank okay, you thank you doug chappelle <clears throat> hi my name is uh, doug chappelle uh c-h-a-p-p-e-l-l-e -L -L -E. i live in the city of renton in uh, stonegate which is the uh, neighborhood immediately uh, to the north of the uh, yellow boundary that you see there. Uh, I represent the uh, homeowners board there um, as the uh, vice president of the homeowners board. Um, we concur with the idea that this annexation go through. However, we do have several concerns uh, that we think are relevant, uh, particularly moving forward when you get into uh, the environmental impact statements. Um, in particular, uh, we disagree with the city's ass uh, assessment that it is a uh, seasonal stream. Uh, in fact, my back lot line uh, abuts Greens Creek and it does contain water all year long. We don't know where it dries up, uh, if it does dry up, but we've noticed that it has started uh, containing water throughout the year ever since uh, Windstone came in and they have that retaining pond that you can see there on the, the lower half of the stream. Uh, so we did request that as part of the environmental impact statement uh, that they, uh, in the entirety of Greens Creek be assessed uh, again as it's uh, part of the salmonid uh, bearing stream uh, for May Creek. Uh, in addition, uh, we'd like to make sure that uh, as they move forward that the May Creek Basin Plan uh, be considered uh, in terms of uh, the compliance there. We just wanted to mention that. Um, our major concern, however, has to do with uh, uh, the quality of life that we have both in uh, Windstone, I'll speak on their behalf because they are in a similar situation as to us in Stonegate. At present, uh, Stonegate is a no outlet uh, neighborhood. Um, and they, you can see where the, the road there ends at the top end of the yellow line there. Uh, we would be uh, extremely adverse to the idea that Lyons was connected in any way uh, to Windstone. Um, and within just the last year, uh, the traffic on Nile Avenue uh, going from State Route 5, 900 uh, north to May Creek uh, has increased uh, dramatically during rush hours to the point where uh, it's routine to see the traffic backed up uh, from May Creek or May Valley Road uh, to the entrance to Windstone uh, and sometimes it's even difficult to get through the uh, the traffic light there uh, at State Route 900 and so we would if that was going to be part of a future consideration we would uh, dearly like to see a traffic study um, or it simply be annexed and platted out if there were future development um, such that the, uh, the relatively closed nature of both Windstone and Stonegate uh, were preserved as that is a very important uh, part of our quality of life. Um, however, we don't have any preference as to which neighborhood, whether it be Windstone or Stonegate, uh, that uh, the Wolf property would be connected to. 
Um, we are a bit concerned about the uh, R1 versus R4 designation uh, because of the the, uh, the traffic. Uh, if it were added to the eight acres, um, you'd have a total of somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 14 acres uh, at R4. We'd see an additional 56 homes, uh, which would be roughly doubling our number of, of uh, traffic uh, occurrences per day, uh, going from roughly 500 right now to about 1,000 per day. Uh, that's starting to put us into the neighborhood where uh, as part of your traffic study, you may wind up seeing the need for uh, traffic lights, perhaps at Lyons and uh, Nile, or perhaps Nile and uh, May Valley. And so I think that the city should consider that uh, as, as they move forward, particularly with the zoning, because that would be a, a non-trivial cost to the city. Um, and I think that covers my high points. So okay, thank you, thank you very much. Next is Heather Storbiak. I hope I pronounced that correct. That perfect, yeah. <laughs> it's always entertaining to see how that's going to get pronounced since there's like no vowels in there. Um, so good evening. My name's Heather Sturbiak. Uh, my husband Mark and I own the property at 1904 Iwako. So our back fence makes up part of that uh, western boundary of the property that we're looking at tonight. Um, frankly, it makes sense to annex this. It's kind of weird that there's this little parcel right there in the middle. Um, and frankly, I'm not here to talk about the merits of annexation or not. What I want to make sure that the council is aware of is that there are a number of landmark trees right along that border. Um, and according to what I find online in terms of the, the, uh, uh, the, the City of Renton website and the Urban Forest Program, um, I just want to make sure that you all are aware that they are there so that as this property is annexed that they can be properly cataloged and preserved. Um, there's, an, there's an actual tree line that runs that whole western border of these gigantic pine trees that I think are an important part of the Renton uh, urban forest that I, again, just want to point out that those are there that, so that those can be protected and preserved. That's great. Well, thank you. And the administrator of overseas planning is right behind oh, you fantastic. taking notes. <laughs> so, so thank you. You got that. You bet. Thank you. Was there anybody else who wanted to testify on this annexation proposal? Okay, what's the wish of the council? I move we close the public hearing. Second. Second. It's been moved by uh, Mr. McGurvin, second by Mr. Pavoni, that the public hearing be closed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. McGurvin. Uh, real quick, I just want to make sure I had a question for staff. Most of those comments uh, were, with, were with regard to future de development, not to the um, uh, annexation per se. Okay. Um, so it would be fair to say we would take into account those environmental concerns because I certainly do Absolutely. agree with making sure we do. Uh, look into making sure we have uh, minimize any impacts to salmon. Yep. So uh, with that, I would like to move that we uh, accept the 60% p petition author and authorize submittal to the Boundary Review Board and zone that the property R4. Second. Second. Okay, it's <laughs> been moved by Mr. McIrvin, second by Mr. Corman, that council approve the 60% annexation. Um, any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. Okay, administrative report, Mr. Harrison. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, good evening. Two short items. Uh, just a reminder that a Renton Farmer's Market is tomorrow, Tuesday, June 26, at Piazza Park in downtown Renton. They'll be celebrating Kids Day starting at 3.30. And lastly, um, just information about preventive street maintenance, traffic impact projects, and road closures that are happening this week and in the future can be found at at the city's website at rentonwa.gov uh, backslash traffic impacts. That's it. Okay, thank you. Next is audience comments. We have several people signed up to address the council. Uh, when I call your name, please come to the podium, give your name and city of residence for the record, and you have five minutes. There's a timer with a light on it next to the city clerk. First is John Worthington. John Worthington, City of Renton. I'm going to throw three things at you today. I couldn't uh, get the third one on the list. Uh, the first thing I'd like to go over is the loss of general lanes. 
We've lost quite a few general lanes in the city um, of late uh, by the stadium. There's a couple spots where we've lost a general lane. They built a school, we're losing another one. In, in the middle of town where the apartment complex is, we've lost a general lane. I'd feel better mm -hmm. if the public had a chance to vote. I know after talking to the planning that the local folks are down with those general lane losses, but I think the public paid for them more than just the local folks, and I would like to see them get a chance to have their input on when, when they lose a general lane or not. The second issue is the county's doing a land buy, and I have a lot of concerns about the only throughputs we have left available. And it's, a, it's an extensive land buy, and I'm concerned about the power lines that run straight across the east side. It's a straight shot, it's a logical location for a high speed transit corridor. I just wanna make sure that the city protects the long-term ability of people in this city to get to and from other cities if they can't live and work in Renton, and that's a lot of people. And the third thing is you have an agenda um, uh, on D, it's uh, AB 2168. And I had a bad um, situation with Casey and Grove. Um, before you approve their contract, I would like the city to be aware of what happened in that incident. I had a friend who was represented by Casey and Grove, and uh, he did not get good representation. And we tried to get rid of his attorney. I called the city of Auburn, actually, to find out because his public defender didn't, uh, wasn't there or something happened. And <clears throat> that next day in court, Casey and Grove called and said that they were threatened by the other people. It was actually me that called. And the, they held him in court, in Auburn Municipal Court, for, oh, a good hour and a half. And based upon this threat that never happened, it was just looking for the supervisor of public defender. That's all I was doing. And it's this trial is going on. It's, I'll just call it the Great Green Tongue Trial of 2018. It never should have made it. Um, to the point that it is. The, the man did not get good representation. If you want to have your, your folks get bad representation, then you would approve this. If you would like to hear from these people directly, I'm sure they'd be glad to come talk about their experiences with Casey and Grove. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. Next is Jeff Coley. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Chip, can you help move one of those chairs? I got it. Thank you. Okay. Bring the microphone in, please. If you'd like. Or you can. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, my name's Jeff Coley. I live here in the city of Renton. Um, I used to live at 330 Park Avenue North in Renton here, where the new elementary school is being built. Um, I was eminently domained out of there, forced out of my home of 29 years, 26 of it in a wheelchair. Um, it took me 25 of those 26 years to get my house all set up so that I can take care of it, I can remain independent, do everything myself. Um, then I got forced out. I got lucky when I finally decided that the Renton School District, they're gonna get my house because all they have to prove in eminent domain is that the property's being used for public use, right? Um, so I got real lucky. You know, I'd been looking on Zillow for two years since, you know, the whole process. We heard that we were gonna get bought out. Um, for me, a person of disability, looking for a house has been very difficult. Um, first thing I look at when I look at Zillow for a house is, is the driveway flat? Is it flat enough that I can park my vehicle there and get in and out of my vehicle? Um, the number of houses, you know, just 
in the two years that I was looking, I probably came across a dozen houses that fit my criteria that, you know, I could just go look at. Um, well, I was lucky when I finally decided that, you know, I'm going to give up my fight for my house, that this house at 10935 um, Southeast 182nd Street came available. Um, it was on, when it came on Zillow, I saw it the first day it came on Zillow. Um, it had already been on the market for three days. Um, it was on the market for $299,000. When I went to go look at it, the real estate lady said that it had been bid up to $335,000. I had to bid $336,000 to get it. Um, When I got the house, I moved into it the first year, two years ago that I was there, one of the wettest winters that we've ever had around here. Um, every time I went somewhere, I went out and I got soaked. Um, it takes me a while to get in and out of my vehicle, and so I got wet. And I decided that summer that, well, I'm not going to do that again. I'm going to put up a carport because at my house down at 330 Park Avenue North, I had a carport and it got taken away from me. So I decided, well, I'm going to put up a carport. And so I put up the carport there and it had been up there for you know, nine months now. And I've had, I'm doing work on the front yard there to make it so that it's accessible. I put sidewalks in there, raised garden beds so that I can garden. Um, and I had construction guys out there working on it and they had cones around their truck and the inspection lady or something, code compliance lady happened to be driving by and she saw the cones out there and, you know, thought there was construction and she saw the carport and she stopped and said, you know, told the guys that, hey, you guys can't be working on this carport. This is illegal. And they said, no, we're not working on the carport. We're working on the yard here and because the carport had already been up. I had just gone shopping or something and, and the guys told me mm -hmm. that she took pictures of it. And a couple days later, I get a notice that I have an illegal carport, that it wasn't permitted. And uh, so I get back to them and, and discuss it with them, tell them why I'm doing it, you know, for disability so I can stay dry. Um, and they said, well, it's illegal, you have to tear it down. Um, so then I asked, well, can I get a variance or anything like that? And they said, well, we won't recommend that you get a variance because I have a two-car garage that they claim that I can park in and get in and out of my vehicles when, in fact, I tried, we, we emptied, me and my father emptied the garage out and I put my Falcon inside the car. I had to have my dad back in the truck because if I would have done it, I wouldn't have been able to get out of the truck. Um, there's not enough room. I have a wood shop in there in my house down on Park Avenue. I had a wood shop in my garage. So, you know, I brought the tools up. Um, so there's just not enough room in the garage. Um, if I do put the two cars in there, if I was to take out all of my tools and everything, shelves, benches that I have, and I put the two cars in there, um, the only thing that I could do would be come out of the, the door that goes from the house to the garage. I'd come out the landing, down the ramp, and then I could go between the two cars. Um, I wouldn't be able to get on either side of the cars where the um, electrical panels on the side that the truck would be on, so I'd have absolutely no access to that unless I pulled the truck out. And then on the other side here, I got a refrigerator and the hot water heater, which both of those I wouldn't have any access to at all. Um, the, I've been dealing with uh, an Alex Morganroth downstairs, and he tells me that, well, you can build a shop in your backyard and put all your wood tools back there or whatever. And I kind of said, well, that wouldn't work out too good. It'd be kind of difficult for me to get wood from my truck, you know, to the backyard to where I could, you know, do anything with it. Where as I'm there, I can park my truck, 
right up against the garage. I can pull wood out of the back of my truck, drop it down, you know, get it right to my saw. I can do things with it. Um, there's another issue with applying for a variance with money. Um, I'm low income, disabled, um, can't afford, I've heard it's like $1,300 to apply for a variance. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I, um, excuse me one second, Council. If you don't have any objections, I'm going to let them go ahead and please. talk for a couple yeah, more minutes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I can't afford to pay for the variance, so he tells me that I have to ask you guys for you know a waiver of the variance fee. Um, I don't know that I should even have to apply for a variance. I. Um, it's my understanding city of Renton is supposed to make reasonable accommodations for people of disability. Um, all I'm asking for, you know, is back part of just compensation, which is what I'm owed is getting me back to where I was. I had a carport, you know, I need a carport. I put up a carport. I think I should be granted it. The carport, it, it's back away from the easement. The, the city's easement for, um, I was told that the water meter is the line for the easement and Alex has told me that yeah, the carport is out of the city's easement, no problem there, it doesn't interfere with any utilities, um, it's not a fire hazard. Um, the, the whole thing too, the, their objection is there's some kind of a 29 foot rule that um, no part of the house can be within 29 feet of the road and anything that is within six foot of the house is considered attached to the house and therefore part of it and I don't understand the reason for the rule. Um, the lady that, that gave me the fine, um, she told me that um, it's for a fire hazard and it's like, well, it's a metal carport there's no fire hazard there. And she goes, oh, yeah, okay, I guess. Well, I what we'll do is I'll definitely have the staff look into that and look into the particular issues that you've outlined and see if there are any provisions in which we have latitude to uh, mm -hmm. to work with you on this carport issue. Okay, I, right now I got a 200, I got a thing here that says I got a $250 fine coming at me. Um, this was given to me on June 12th, and it says I have 15 days to pay it or something here. And the whole time I've been working with Alex, you know, I did contact the city when I got the very first notice. And apparently, you know, Alex said that he would talk to her about this so that, you know, I had time to deal with this. and. I don't know that he did. She said that nobody talked to her, and so I en she ended up going by and seeing that the carport was still there, and so she issued me a citation. Okay, well, we'll look into it tomorrow and get back to you right away. Thank you. Okay, you I betcha. appreciate that. Um, Inez? Uh, oh. It's so <laughs> great to see you all tonight, and of course, I'm here as Jeff's support system. And um, I just want to say, I haven't been in Renton in a while, and I really like that new intersection you put in down by where the Jet City Expresso used to be. I wish there was a little park off on the right, but I don't know what your plans are, but that's a great improvement there. Yeah, thank you. So on behalf of Jeff, I, I had some other pictures I wanted to share with you. On, on this one, for example, his neighbors can park in their driveway. And he explained to you why he can't use his garage because he doesn't have enough room. And so he, he's merely asking if he can use his driveway. And in order to do that, because his neighbors have legs and he doesn't, he needs a cover to protect himself from the weather. It's far enough off the road, it's just not a problem there, as he explained. And of course, it's not a flammable material. He talked about his garden. You know, Jeff has two hobbies, his woodworking, and he loves gardening. Hence, these are his raised beds to accommodate in his wheelchair. Um, the city being ahead of the curve, 
already has an answer to his problem, and I just want to quickly go over that. So um, there's lots of municipalities have trouble with the ADA because their code compliance officers, of course, they're dealing with the law as it's <coughs> written and not with the anomalies that are provided for. And the ADA does cover this. And of course, the city of Renton being ahead of the curve, it's already ahead of the curve. There's this web page, and it's even got a grievance form. And I think that would be the next step. And that's this form, which I'll give to Jeff. And you know, we're just asking that his fines be lifted, that he be given a no fee variance. And there's a way to do this that it doesn't require anything special outside of what the city already has the potential to do for Jeff. And so that's what he's asking for tonight. And frankly, I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna take care of him. And it's been great to see you tonight. I Thank loved coming back to Renton. I love being a lawyer. I help seniors like Jeff all the time. I made $357 being a lawyer last year. <laughs> and I helped a lot of people. And once I was driving down the freeway from helping a guy like Jeff who, who was paralyzed and he'd had trouble getting his disability. And as I was driving from Tacoma back home, I thought, I feel light as a feather. What a fabulous way to spend my retirement. And so if you see the Docknells, thank them for suing me because without that frivolous lawsuit. Yeah, and as I just seen you not use names and okay, you know, you're well, on the air. If so. you see whoever sued me, okay. thank them because I would have never become a lawyer without that. And it is the best thing that's happened in my entire life. I hope I live long enough to be the oldest practicing attorney in King County. And I'm already 73, so I'm, I'm, you know, halfway there. If I can make it to 96, I'll be like Alva Long. <laughs> anyway, thanks, you guys. You bet. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. You betcha. Okay, next is the consent agenda. There are six items for council consideration. Would you, anybody like any items pulled for discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Prince. I move we concur with the consent agenda. Second. Second. It's been moved by... Mr. Prince, second by Ms. Witchie, the council can concur with the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Moving on to unfinished business, Mr. Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the committee to whole has a committee report. Okay, this committee report is regarding the Sunset Multi-Service and Career Development Center. The committee of the whole recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to award a $400,000 capital grant to the Renton Housing Authority to help renovate the former Renton Highlands Library for use as the Sunset Multi-Service and Career Development Center, subject to an accept acceptable agreement to be approved by council established between the city and the Renton Housing Authority, and also to authorize the mayor to enter into and execute the letter of intent with the Renton Housing Authority for the $400,000 city capital grant. And this is signed by Council President, Mr. Prince. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Prince. I move Council concur in the recommendation of the Committee to Whole Report. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Prince, second by Ms. Witchie, that Council concur with the Committee of the Whole Report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. No more unfinished business. Mr. Okay, Mayor. thank you, Mr. Corman. And no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Pavoni? No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Perez? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On behalf of Council Member Person, um, I will present the finance, um, the, yeah, uh, I have a one committee report. No, the finance committee has one report to present. <laughs> okay. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> this committee report is regarding approval of claims and payroll vouchers. The finance committee approves the following payments. Accounts payable, total payment of $6,296,006.70 for vouchers 10072 through 10080, 60818, 60918, 365859 through 365861, 365873 through 366308, payroll benefit withholding vouchers 5825 through 5834, and 365862 through 365872 and three wire transfers. Payroll, total payment of $1,419,429.16 for vouchers 
for payroll vouchers, which includes 704 direct deposits and 15 checks, May 16th through 31st of 2018 pay period, and Kidder Matthews, total payment of $34,502.34 for vouchers 5652 through 5670. And this is signed by the committee vice chair and member. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Ms. Perez. I move that council concur with the finance committee report. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Perez, second by Mr. Pavoni, that council concur with the finance committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Mr. McIrvin. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, the Planning and Development Committee has a couple of committee reports. Okay, the first committee report is regarding expansion of areas eligible for multifamily property tax exemption. The Planning and Development Committee has reviewed the Planning Commission and staff recommendations as well as the public comments received and recommends the consideration of the creation of new eligible area in proximity to Rainier Avenue and Grady Way for the multifamily property tax exemption be referred back to the Planning Commission for further review. Additionally, the committee directs staff to review the MFTE incentive for the existing downtown and sunset eligible areas and the incentive in general. Finally, the committee directs staff to review the waived fees incentive in conjunction with the review of the MFTE incentive. And this is signed by the committee chair and vice chair. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. McIrvin. Uh, yes, as uh, council may recall, we heard from uh, an applicant who was looking at for a uh, project in the MFTE zone recently. Uh, this is kind of coming about in terms of uh, sending it back for a little bit more review uh, uh, partially in, in terms of requests so we can figure out a little bit more of the financial situation so we can make sure we can find that incentive and get that balance just right. Uh, maybe it wasn't quite baked as it came out of the oven yet, so hopefully in a timely fashion we'll get this one uh, right and bring it back to Council in, in the sh uh, very near future. So with that, I would like to uh, move that the Council concur with the Planning and Development Committee report. Second. It's been moved by Mr. McIrvin, second by Mr. Pavoni, that Council concur with the Planning and Development Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, the second committee report is regarding an appointment to the City Center Community Plan Advisory Board. The Planning and Development Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to confirm Mayor Law's appointment of Mr. Bruce McIntyre to the City Center Community Plan Advisory Board for a term expiring April 30th, 2023. And this is signed by the committee chair and vice chair. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. McIrvin. I move that the council concur with the Planning and Development Committee report. Second. It's been moved by Mr. McIrvin, second by Mr. Pavoni, that council concur with the Planning and Development Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, um, <clears throat> Ms. Witchie. Uh, no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, let's see. Legislation. We have one resolution this evening. Okay, this resolution is a resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, adopting an amendment to the City Center Community Plan. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. McIrvin. I move that the uh, resolution be adopted as read. Second. second. It's been moved by, uh, moved by Mr. McIrvin, second by Mr. Pavoni, that this resolution be adopted as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Moving on to new business, Mr. Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor. On. Um, Wow, Monday, July 2nd. I can't believe we're talking about <clears throat> July already. Um, Committee of Whole will meet at 6 p.m. in the conferencing center. Uh, we have one item on the agenda, and that is the facilities condition assessment. And that's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Corman. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to announce a transportation committee meeting for July 2nd at 5 o'clock p.m. in the council conference room. Two items on that agenda. The first is job order contract with Sabre contractors for guardrail repair, and the second item is emerging issues in transportation. <coughs> That's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pavoni. Uh, no new business, Mr. Mayor. Hey, Ms. Perez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On Monday, July 2nd, the Community Services Committee will meet in the Council Conference Room at 5.30. There are two items in the agenda. First, best star for kids, grant update, and second, emerging issues in community services. Thank okay, you. thank you. Mr. McIrvin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, two items to announce for new business. Uh, the first is that we're canceling the Planning and Development Committee, uh, scheduled originally for Thursday, June 28th. Um, and then the second item is in relation to uh, some of the, some of the uh, uh, 
to the committee report we passed and some of the docket items for the city. So right now, the city has a docketed legislative review um, for waived fees, um, and it also uh, is reviewing uh, property tax exemption for multifamily housing in targeted residential areas. Uh, so uh, similar to how we did before with the uh, moratorium, although this one's a little bit different, it's interim controls, we need some temporary uh, interim controls in place uh, while we're doing this review. So with that, I would like to move uh, that we add an emergency ordinance tonight to the agenda for first reading and advancement to second and final reading uh, to uh, establish interim controls prohibiting the acceptance of applications for fee waivers and applications for property tax exemptions from multifamily housing uh, and residential targeted areas. Second. second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. McGurvin, second by Mr. Prince that we move for an emergency ordinance to be read this evening and advance to second and final reading in regards to fee waivers and multifamily uh, developments. Correct? Yep. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. McCurvin. Uh, I move that the ordinance be placed um, on, so make sure I did this. I'm gonna screw this up like I did last time. I would like to move that the ordinance be uh, placed on uh, Second reading, first reading tonight. Uh, now, uh, uh, sorry, it'd be advanced to second reading. You just did that. And, I'm sorry, I, we just moved the first part. So I would like to move that the ordinance be advanced to second reading tonight. Or did we do so, that? So now all you need to do is just. Um, or I can just move I it can off just, the I ordinance. can just start reading the ordinance for you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> an ordinance of the city of Renton, Washington, establishing an interim control prohibiting yeah. the acceptance of applications for fee waivers and applications for property tax exemptions for multifamily housing in residential targeted areas, setting forth findings of fact and support of said interim control, providing for severability, declaring an emergency, and establishing an immediate effective date. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. McGurvin. I'm going to get this right one of these days. Um, so I'd like to move that the ordinance be placed on second and final reading tonight. Second. It's been moved by Mr. McCurvin, second by Mr. Pavoni, that this ordinance be placed on second and final reading this evening. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, I am going to read the ordinance again. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, establishing an interim control prohibiting the acceptance of applications for fee waivers and applications for property tax exemptions for multifamily housing in residential targeted areas, setting forth findings of fact and support of said interim control, providing for severability, declaring an emergency, and establishing an immediate effective date. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. McIrvin. Uh, I would like to move the ordinance be adopted as read. Second. It's been moved by Mr. McIrvin, second by Mr. Pavoni, that this ordinance be adopted as read, and this requires a roll call. Mr. Prince? Aye. Mr. Corman? Aye. Mr. Pavoni? Aye. Ms. Perez? Aye. Mr. McIrvin? Aye. Ms. Switchy? Aye. Roll call, Mr. Mayor, all ayes. The ayes have it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Switchy? Yes, Mr. Mayor, the Utilities Committee will be meeting on Thursday, June 28th at 4 p.m. in the Council Conference Room. We have two items on the agenda. The first is Lift Station and Force Main Rehabilitation Amendment and the second is emerging issues in utilities, and that is okay, all. Okay, thank you very much. So wish to the council. Move we adjourn. Second. Okay. Been moved by Mr. Okay. Prince, second by Ms. Witchie that we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, we're adjourned. <laughs>